All right, everybody. Here we are. We are live. Week 71, Becker Vineyards Virtual Tasting. And uh, tonight we've got a great lineup of wines and uh, we've got a great panel here with us tonight. So our uh, wonderful owners, uh, Dr. Richard Becker and uh, Joseph Becker. Uh, we have our uh, winemaker, John Leahy, and our assistant winemaker, uh, Rachel Fanning, and uh, myself, Bobby Totten, the wine club director here. And uh, we have a great lineup of, of the wines, as I mentioned. It is uh, actually Rachel Fanning's choices, uh, uh, her wine selection for tonight, and a beautiful lineup, as I might add, uh, which we have the 2018 uh, Chardonnay Reserve from the Talon Vineyards. We have the 2018 Primavera Spring, uh, which is mainly Sangiovese from the Wine Club Vineyard. And then we have our 2017 Texas Cab that we do have in distribution, which is a beautiful wine. Uh, so as we go through those wines tonight, uh, I hope that you have your glasses ready, uh, poured, and uh, ready to taste these beautiful wines alongside of us. And I'm just going to hand it over to you guys and, uh, and uh, for a few words. I, I just want to say um, 71 weeks of this uh, um, struggle against this terrible virus and, um, and just a, a very sad in the last few days to lose a member of one of the winery families and, and our hearts are just completely with them. And I, I have just, there's nothing else to say other than we have to fight this every way that each one of us can. And, and uh, I just want to say that we're, we were feeling and thinking about that family. Joe. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I would, uh, I would just add that, um, you know, having seen some uh, more and more of my, my patients in my medical practice um, come down with this virus, likely this Delta variant. Um, it, I, I hope everybody stays safe. We're starting school again. So I, as I always say, I have to applaud all of the, the brave teachers and uh teaching faculty as we go back to school, um, you know, at a time when we're, we're dealing with another spike. So I, my hat's off to everybody out there and um, thinking about you, thinking about you and appreciating um, everything you do for my children. And then also we have this wonderful opportunity to celebrate this beautiful line that you all have made for, and it's just, uh, that's a, that's a, a moment of relief and John, Rachel, thanks. And these are Rachel's choices. And, uh, and I love these choices. So it'll be fun to talk about. And I want to say too, one, one interesting thing about the wines, and that is we have one of the most famous, maybe the most famous white wine, white grape, Chardonnay, which is a derivative of a red grape, Pinot Noir, interestingly in part, and Guad Blanc. And uh, we're going to talk about Cabernet Sauvignon, which is a derivative of a great white grape, Sauvignon Blanc. So uh, just let's, let's try to figure that out. <laughs> All right. Well, Rachel, it's your pony. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. I'm on. Let's go. All right. <laughs> so first off, well, hello, curly haired little baby. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Precious little child. So start off. We're going to start with the 2018 Chardonnay that is from the Du Talent Vineyards in um, Mason, Texas. And um, I am so not used to kicking this off. Wasn't prepared for it at all. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> stuck. I froze. What to say about it. You know what? This is actually where John goes, Rachel, now tell me what you think. Why don't you kick this off, Rachel, and tell me what you smell out of this. So Jonathan... Give me your best <laughs> schnoz on this one. I, I agree. Rachel, what do you think? <laughs> Does that help? <laughs> hey, wait, this just in, this just in. Um, I, uh, so uh, my um, head golf froze off camera. So uh, Nathan, I heard that uh, you lost to Richard today. That's what I just heard on here. No, oh, I didn't. Oh, well, can you come over here and see it? I didn't lose to you, Richard. <laughs> he burned he burned the last hole for a for a pull out win. This is terrible. Wow. <laughs> anyway, awesome. No, no, that's awesome. I love y'all's golf stories. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I see a quick joke. Hi, buddy, how are you? 
Knock, knock. Who's there? Who's there? One is for Richard. Okay. Good Richard. So that's that good. Knock, knock. Who's there? Banana. Yeah, who's that? Who? Banana. Banana. Banana, Banana. who? Banana. Banana. It's cold out here. I want to. I'm going to freeze out there. Can I please come inside? <laughs> oh. No. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, that one. <laughs> I hope he's a better like golfer. A Bobby Joe. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. That's awesome. Uh, uh, All right. Rachel, we, we, you don't want to forget that Chardonnay is named for the Roman village near Macon called Cardonicum, which meant wild thistle and artichoke. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was, you know, it's, I've always loved the, the Chardonnays of Macon. I think really Macon and, and Chablis are my favorite Chards, I, and, you know, and uh, for whatever reason. Anyway, it was then first cultivated by the Cistercians in the 11th century and then planted as we know uh, in, in the northern part of the Rhone Valley from from uh, actually below bone all the way up to Chablis. So um, it's interesting that it's now planted in uh, Camp Air, Texas. And um, uh, it, that's, a, uh, that's an interesting transposition, but um, uh, here it is. And that, and that town that Chardonnay is from is um, what we know of today is Waco, right? <laughs> <laughs> No. Uh, <laughs> oh, right. Camp Air has a fair amount of thistles. Right? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Well, I do happen to know that this Chardonnay is, I believe, that the 2017, it was the fourth leaf, no more than the fifth leaf. Um, and it is the Dijon, is it the 76? Is that right? 76? I think so. Yes. 96, 76, 76. Um, the fermentation took place in all French oak. Believe it was 30% new oak. So 70% of various ages, one year to neutral. But it's, it's fun for me to think about that this DNA information has been, has been cultivated and nurtured and protected for a thousand years between uh, France and, and, uh, other, and other parts of the world. But uh, exciting to see, see it pop up in Camp Air, Texas. But, and, you know, one of the big reasons that I chose this was because I, I've been saying for a couple of years that I think that we have some of the best Chardonnay growers that the state of Texas has to offer. And um, our, the Chardonnay that comes off of the Canada Family Vineyard, Andrews, I mean, they're just amazing. They're so beautiful and they're so, they're very different. Um, I was talking to Miss Canada earlier this year and the clone that she has is actually from the Finger Lakes region outside of New York or in New York, but, um, and just, they're just absolutely beautiful, beautiful Chardonnay. Yeah. I'm super, super proud to get to work with both of them. Uh -huh. Yes, baby. All right, Bobby, since John's not going to use his sniffer, you <laughs> tell us what you get off of this wine. <laughs> Please. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Yeah, so uh, uh, the beautiful floral nose, I mean, just the, it's kind of that that white, um, almost white like the, yeah, hey, yeah, like white flower, breath. yes, yeah, like the baby's yeah. breath or like the the honeysuckle or the honeysuckle. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it's gorgeous, and the vanilla, lime blossom, yeah. But then on the palate, I was getting like kind of citrus notes, a little bit of pineapple. Wonderful vanilla on the on the on the palate mm -hmm. from extensive barrel aging. <laughs> no more than fourteen months. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> fourteen to fifteen is what I heard about. <laughs> <laughs> and very gently extracted out of there, coarse. Uh, yeah. So I'll tell you, every, everyone that's tasted this wine has loved it, almost without exception, everywhere. So, so, Dad, I, I want to ask you a question. I know that um, you and I both love Chardonnay, and um, you, you've inspired a lot of my palate, but I'm just curious, what, 
you know, we had that, we had a wonderful um, Burgundy a few nights ago, but is there a, is there a style of Burgundy that you think this, this Chardonnay is very similar to? I think this is more, um, it's more like a Montreuxche or uh, than it is like a Chablis or a Macon to okay. me. John, uh, John, what do you think? Um, I actually think it's a it's a wonderful example of a Montreuxche. Absolutely, uh, yeah. it's got that creaminess, and I think you all are crazy. There's a little lime flower in there, but I'm getting gardenia out the wazoo. Yeah, I'm um, with you on that one. Right. Yeah. Um, Interesting. Yeah, I was. You know, you're right about gardenia. Absolutely right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rachel, you did a, an absolutely fantastic job with this one. Well, thank you, John. I think that we have done a really fabulous job over the last several years with all of our Chardonnays. I just, I go on and on and on about them. And you know why? I, to be honest with you, I think why is because we have 15 pounds of pre-ground coffee in, in the office waiting. To I think it's the only reason we can get anything done. 15 <laughs> pounds will almost get us through harvest. <laughs> <laughs> What do you? What, uh, we've we've made a couple of great Chardonnays off of off of Drew's vineyard. Is is there anything in particular about that vineyard that John or Rachel you all find that lends itself to making this delightful, rich Chardonnay? Those hickory sands. Okay. Yeah, I, the minerality there. That yeah, yeah. yeah. I just you know I know people go on and on and on about the limestone out, out of uh, you know the Burgundies that grow on there and stuff but I, those granites up in mason county are just absolutely fantastic if i could plant five thousand acres up there we rule the world <laughs> yeah. yeah and you know and drew's such a fabulous farmer i mean he's doing such a great job with our grapes not our grapes his grapes that we get to buy from but um yeah he's he's such a great um tender to the grapes it just grows a beautiful several lots several yeah. different varietals yeah. that we buy from him i'm kind of excited about this year because we have a much longer growing period now this year than we did i mean they, they so came weird. out yeah maybe a couple weeks later but they are really lagging now and we've got cooler weather nice even ripening it's kind of exciting it, it may is. not be as intense as 17 but i'm telling you what 2021 looks like it's going to be one for the books yep. all the problems aside the the freeze in the winter the heavy rains it's drying out now and things, I mean, we're the 11th of August. You have no idea the anxiety. There's one batch of grapes in the winery right now. And I'm like, <laughs> we should have like 15. What's going on? You know? <laughs> so, yeah. um, I'm, I'm, and I, John, Dad, Rachel, please correct me if I, if I misstate this, but I wonder if you could almost call um, the, that, that soil around uh, Camp Air, our, our Texas version of, of Kim Ridgian, you know, at the, the, I mean, doesn't there's some some effect from when the Gulf was up over that part of Texas, like they talk about the the channel or the the ocean getting up over Burgundy to get the the Kimbridgian soil from for millions of years ago? Is that a is that my, my way off my rocker with that comparison? Or uh, either well, I don't way, think you're way off the rocker. Enough. Certainly. Um, now, do you remember all those those wonderful biomes I showed you? Yes. That yes. showed the end of the what? Bioherms. Yeah. Um, right. I have. Um, I have been corrected. I meant bioherms. Um, but you. So that showed you where the edge of the Gulf was um, yeah. back in the day. I think um, Richard, you were. Um, I was probably graduating high school about that time. <laughs> um, the. Uh, <laughs> I was in the Cistercian Academy <laughs> in Dijon. Yes. In Dijon. Were you a bull, you Were you a Were you a fighting bullpup at that point? <laughs> I was trying. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, you know, there's a lot of things that go into it, Joe. Um, it's just, but when you walk through Drew's Vineyard and you taste the fruit and you taste the, the wine, you know, in the last 10 years, we've, those wines have been incredible. Um, yeah. Absolutely incredible. So yeah, and I, I, I am surprised more people aren't planting grapes up there in Mason County, to tell you the truth. Well, if you talk to Drew, he'll tell you that yes, you can plant them on the granite rocks, but they are going to be sitting on granite rocks and that's it. There's no water, no soil. There's nothing. You just lay them right there on the granite rocks. <laughs> so there's, I feel like there's probably he's got not all that a beautiful lot of places. Deterioration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that sand. Um, 
and yeah, his vineyard drains quickly. I mean, we, we talk about a two inch rain and he's like, yeah, give it till noon. I can get the tractor out there. And I'm like, who does that? I mean, that water drains so quickly. I mean, I'm exaggerating a little, but you know, it, it does, it has never been an issue um, up there. It's very well drained. And of course there's a detraction to that too, especially in really dry and hot weather. But um, he just, it, that vineyard just keeps pumping along. So uh, I'm sure he's got a little magic spot up there. So the difference between Brenda and Drew's uh, vineyard, so as-, as About 380 Brenda, miles. Right. <laughs> and 3,000 <laughs> feet. Yeah. <laughs> that's, called, that's called a microclimate, John, in, uh, in Texas. <laughs> Maybe in Texas and France it would be called <laughs> Germany. <laughs> <laughs> different countries in between those two places <laughs> yeah, yeah. um right. so is it a little more rocky soil up in canada's and a little more sandy on drew's or well it yeah it is actually they've got um pockets of good soil up there canada's but there's a lot of limestone right on the surface and it's rocky as i'll get out you drive into that vineyard they have a a cut um a little cutaway right before you get to the cabernet vineyard that can show you the where the soil stop stops and that limestone shelf begins, you know. And then the Canada's also sit on top of an extraordinarily old riverbed. It's been buried for a while, but there's a an ancient riverbed under there too that uh, has gravels um, that allow that you know a quick drain. But there's a lot of uh, alluvium there. Uh, it's a wonderful little vineyard too, but for a variety of different reasons, different than Drew's. You know. Right. You know, it, interestingly, also, the, when the Cistercians were planting these grapes, Pinot Noir and uh, Chardonnay, they they started actually up in Germany. They started in the region called the Pfalz, uh, which mm -hmm. became a, a prominent place for Riesling production. And because of the cold weather, they they slowly uh, 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 moved south uh, into Burgundy. Now, with the climate change, they're starting to move back. And uh, there's now some wonderful Pinot being grown uh, in the Pfalz by a winemaker named Fritz Becker. And, uh, that, and I, that's kind of fun. And I don't know if Chardonnay is gonna reappear there or not, but it might. Well, you know, it's kind of funny in the last few years, the Cabernet Francs up there have been doing very well because they've had longer growing seasons. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, in the 80s, they weren't <laughs> making very good Cab Francs. And now in the 2000s, there, the Cab Francs are coming into their own. And the Pinot, oh. of course, I cannot remember what they call the Pinot there in Germany, um, different, uh, uh, I slip in my mind. It's called Weisbergunder. Weisbergunder. Yeah. Yes, yes, Weisbergunder. Yeah, thank you. They're doing exceptionally well. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. Okay, Rachel. Now, mm -hmm. the real question is why, just because you made the wine, you can't say I chose it because I made it, but what is it about this wine that attract, attracts you? Why did you decide to showcase it's, it? It's, let me answer, it's really good. <laughs> name is not like Rachel. Rachel. <laughs> Concur. <laughs> I like the Rachel Richard thing. I think we're doing a great job. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, um, I really contemplated just doing a Chardonnay vertical with the 17, 18, and 19. Because that again, be good. I think that we are just knocking it out of the ballpark with these. I think we're doing such a fabulous job. And then I had to slow my roll and um, back up a little bit and be a little bit more, how you say, I don't know, do something different. Um, so I chose the Chardonnay again, because I think we're doing such a great job. I chose the um, Primavera because it is predominantly off of our vineyard. So now we have two Hill Country wines that are, again, I think quite lovely, but the Sangiovese is off of our estate vineyard, our wine club block. And then it has a little bit of Drew's Barbera in there as well. And then for the third wine, the Cabernet Sauvignon, because it is um, a Texas cab. And I really feel like we need to um, promote some of our wines that go out into grocery stores and restaurants a little bit and ensure that the people who are watching us every week know that we have these fabulous wines out there as well. And this is such a, a lovely wine that we make. So there's Perfect. the answer for all three. You're here. <laughs> I'm going to come up with more and difficult questions. So we're going, okay. to, going to delve into the we're going to delve into the polyphenolics of the wines, each one individually. We're going to talk about each the one. six chains that form, you know, six other chains. Yeah, for the tannins, because we briefly touched on that last week. Right. 
six sided tenons. Hmm? Somebody, but Rich, some, Rich, let me ask some, this. There, somebody, a, somebody broke into their analogy workbook. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a, there are whole institutes about uh, the, uh, the right yeast for Chardonnay. And, and what, which, which yeast do we use for this and for the other two, the, the 17 and the 19? So I, you know, it's one of my favorite things to do right before harvest. And, and John's talked about this in the past that I come up with this giant, beautiful matrix about how we're going to treat all of the grape lots, individual lots. And when we have enough, we can split lots up and do fun stuff. Great plan for how we're going to handle harvest. And the grapes come in and John says, no, it's not what we're going to do. We're not going to do that one at all. Nope. But I do love going through all of these you know, these beautiful varietals that we bring in and picking out the yeast. It, to me, it's one of my favorite things that we get to do. Uh, this particular year, we used the QA23. Yes. Which is, it's a terribly boring name. It needs to come up with something more pretty. More how pretty. About, That's correct. How about effing awesome? <laughs> ah, I like it. With a little bit of an exit. QA23, yeah. effing awesome. Yeah. Um, but, and, but John, you can probably tell more. Tell its history, Rachel. Why, uh, where does that yeast come from? Um, I think John actually would probably better capable of talking about that yeast. I know he's used it a it, whole lot. Yeah, it's actually a Stellenbosch University isolate from South Africa used on Burgundy grapes. Wow. So, um, and it does very well. And we do have some Burgundy isolates at the winery and we do use native fermentations, whether we want to or not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so well said. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there are some native, there's some feral ferments is what we call them at the winery. And that's how we put it in. Uh, so in our software, in order to track any additives and everything like the yeast or the nutrients for the yeast, um, you know, we have to write a work order in there. And then it starts when you add a yeast, it, the software automatically starts the ferment in the software tracking. So we came up with a yeast called feral ferment. So, <laughs> so we could track which one started wild. And without actually going through an uh, uh, DNA isolation for the, the the yeast, we don't know exactly what it is. But and that's how we that's how I got Harold years and years ago. The yeast that isolated from a uh, Russian River um, uh, a Russian River Pinot ferment, actually, oh. and uh, it's very very close to QA twenty to the twenty three. But the twenty three has an incredible it's killer positive and has an incredible low nutrient need and can go down really cool temperatures and it is not hurt by heat stress or high alcohol. Mm -hmm. So it really does a beautiful job with Chardonnay. Um, does a great job with Zinfandel too, but the Chardonnay, it just brings out those beautiful white floral notes. And Bobby and, and of course, Rachel and Doc hit on that earlier and stuff. But if you really smell this wine, uh, just, and even it, as it warms up from being cellar temperature to, to being more room temperature, that it's a, it's a, a powerful amount of florals that keep giving on this wine. It's been in bottle over a year, so it's just about perfect to release. I mean, we're just about done with the 17. Not so. yet. <laughs> uh, I like about, we still I have that other vintage about, in. <laughs> now time out. You know, I, I mean, what's 50 to 100 cases of between friends? <laughs> what we're saying is by the 2017 Chardonnay, let's yes. get that out and then we can release the 18. <laughs> <laughs> or you could come see me at the winery and I'll sneak a bottle. We'll just sit out in the vineyard and drink. No. <laughs> deal. Yeah, deal. No, 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 no. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. It'll be yeah, great. I'm good. <laughs> but uh, I, I want to ask, so the, the one time that I made Chardonnay at our winery by myself, uh, which was ill-advised, um, <laughs> we, we had we had a third leaf Chardonnay in, the, in, the, in that first vineyard at the top where it's very sandy. Um, and with the petite sirage down flat, it didn't do so well. And uh, the um, and so I follow, I was following the French techniques of um, uh, the uh, the juice was put in barrel in new French oak, and both primary and secondary fermentation happened in the barrel. Uh, and it, it really Netflix never left barrel until we were ready to bottle it. Except we we did break it out a couple times, and we went through, and we we took a, 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 a whisk and we took one egg and we sort of separated the white from the yellow and we whisked it with a little bit of, bit of salt and put one egg, one, one, the, egg white, the white from one egg in each barrel. That's a huge, the, yeah, that's pardon? a very, very strong fining 
that that's one egg white per barrel is something you could do for heavy tannin wine. I, John, I didn't have a clue about what I was doing. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then we uh, we put it in tank and we let it settle and we bottled it without without finding or filtering. And it, it won a, a gold medal in the Dallas Morning News wine competition. Right. And on. I wish I had a bottle, bottle for you to taste. Uh, I'd love to know what you think about it. I'd like to know what it tastes like. But I can't remember. I right, mean, I, right. This wine is so wonderful that it can't. It couldn't have been this good. But um, it, 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 it was. It was an interesting experience. And Pearson's disease took the Chardonnay out of that vineyard. So, we, um, well, that, you know, that's we've, the history. We've made, we've made advancements, and we maybe I don't know. We might be trying some white wines at at the estate vineyard again soon. Uh huh. That could be good. Oh, and yeah. Rachel, before I forget, we're going to be harvesting Sauvignon Blanc on Sunday night up the High Plains. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right, here we go. I keep saying here harvest is coming. <laughs> yeah, it's kicking off. Uh, so amazing. I don't see any. Um, I'm sorry. Just a, it's amazing. We're a little, you know, we're obviously harvesting a little bit later this year. I think it's, I, I feel like it's going to be a, just a really interesting harvest year. You know, it's, August 11th, yeah. and we haven't touched anything yet. Yeah, yeah. no, it, it, it's driving me crazy. It's really giving me butterflies, to tell you the truth. My anxiety level was extraordinarily high. I woke up right on the dot at 5 a.m. this morning. I was like, I don't need to get out of bed, but I got to get out of bed. There might be grapes <laughs> coming in the winery that I don't know about, even though there are no grapes coming in the winery. <laughs> so, um, Debbie uh, asked, what about the barreling life on this one, Rachel? <laughs> What All about right. the barreling life this one? About that barreling life. So again, it's 2018 vintage. Um, we did bottle it last year. This is 2021. So it was almost two whole years. I think we were like 20, 22 months in barrel. Well, yeah, well, we actually had a cute few months in tank. <clears throat> the, uh, <laughs> That's true. That is true. <laughs> it may have gotten pulled and sat in tank for a little while, but that's perfectly yeah, fine. That just allowed it's, it's, all yeah. those barrels to melt together into one big, beautiful wine. Um, again, yeah, it's been a little I'm over sorry. a year and a half in barrel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you were right, about 20 months. Um, what did I say earlier? 30% new French oak, 70%, somewhere between a year old and maybe three year old French oak. Um, on lease, right. stayed on lease the entire year and a half ish that it was in barrel which i love i absolutely love that i think it yeah. does so much for the body and gives that that nice yeasty notes to it that it, that makes a happy and, name and this one and this one actually did get batonaged um mm -hmm. the the new oak got batonaged during ml so um, we did get it stirred up a little bit during the malac fermentation period so it built up some nice nice uh, nice glycerols nice mouthfeel yep. on there so this one is um you know, it's very nice. So doc, I want your honest opinion. Florals versus cellar versus barrel. Which one are the dominant notes that you're getting? Are you getting more florals or more barrel or more uh, age on this one? I think I'm getting more floral um, mm -hmm. still and, and beautifully so. And I think that'll last a long time. I'm not sure the other, the others will ever overtake it or dominate it. They might, but uh, I think it's just, it's the way it should be in my opinion, just right. <laughs> yeah. So Joe, we we didn't hear from you about this wine, I don't think, did we? No, I I, I don't. I, I think the only thing that I would add is, um, you know, I love the way this wine is tasting now, and I feel like the um, the finish on this wine really is continuing to develop. You know, I think you have this really um, delightful um, floral mid palate, and um, and I think compared to when we tasted this, you know, a year ago or so. I think that I think the finish is starting to evolve. I think the finish has become not that it wasn't, but it's become smoother and a little rounder. I think this I think this wine um, is going to keep getting better, to be honest, in, in the in the bottle. Yeah, I, th I think you're right. I'm just looking quickly. We've just had a few comments on here. I was just trying to make sure I wasn't missing any questions off of Facebook. I still haven't seen my group from San Antonio with the. Um, Poor lady that I've accused to be from every country except the country where she was from when I met her. But we have a wonderful group of friends that follow us and have been every single week here. So I don't know. They may have, they may have missed the mark. That's my way of prodding them to see if they'll comment. So, <laughs> so 
I was going to make mention really quickly as we're um, talking about how this one is going to age. This was a really small production for us. Mm -hmm. We typically often do not get to bottle only 500 cases. And that's all that we started off with. And um, we may actually go through this before we ever release it. We're kind of dabbling in it quite a bit. So I'm just, I don't, didn't mean to say that. That wasn't in my cue card. I apologize. Um, but, <laughs> so grab your cases now because- you fire your cue card writer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, but that, that was, that's been kind of typical at eight, of 18, right? We had, the, we had the, the very hot early summer, hot spring, uh, a little bit lower yield, but, but really wonderful concentration. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Susan just asked, how long can we expect this to last? panel of experts. How long will the Chardonnay last in bottle? It can last a long time. I mean, I've had 40 and 50 year old that it's just couldn't be better. Um, I don't, I just don't know. I think a long time. That, uh, that Montfichet we had the other night, was that, a, was that an 08 or an 07? Uh-huh. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 and I think this wine is continuing to get better. I don't think it's even reached its peak yet. I don't either. Yeah. So does Chardonnay typically have a big ten year? years? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so does Chardonnay typically have a, a more of a, a tannin structure to it, like a, a, that causes the length? I mean, I guess the the wine to age a little bit longer. Yeah, it's generally the floral fairies that pollinate the Chardonnay. That that if there are enough fairies there, that the Chardonnay will last longer. In the ones that yeah work out in the vineyard. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we, we have to be very, very careful. You only get to see them in the new moon. So um, <laughs> yeah, it does have more instruction. But, awesome. Um, I, I have had some beautiful, I, I, in the last decade and a half, I've become a huge fan of vintage Chardonnay. Uh, and it, it's an eye-opening experience when you get to taste a 10 to 15, 20 year old bottle of Chardonnay and it's just, and it's good. And you're like, wow, uh, a white yeah. wine that can, can age very well. And I, I think there's an easy 10 years on this bottle if properly stored. So I agree. Um, yeah. Well, we're going to wrap up Chardonnay and head over to San Giovese. I just want to say one thing. My hat's off to Rachel. Um, excellent job. Yes. And we are looking forward to a wonderful harvest this year. And yes. so when you do come back to work, no. <laughs> <laughs> Someday. <laughs> what do you mean? This is work. Hey, no. right? <laughs> I was even on time. Yeah, you yeah. were. <laughs> All right. Are we on to the Primavera, the 2018? On to the Primavera. Sweet. Everybody wants to take a swirl, a sniff, and a taste. Mm. Wow. Right? Wow. What is that on the That's nose? It's almost like a, like a dark, not coffee, but it's just a wonderful dark... Uh, I almost get like a leather. Yeah, yeah. I'm no definitely one picking up some dark cattle leather ever. <laughs> 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 so I'm getting a clove. I get a lot of dark clove. Yeah. Do you remember? There's always that time and a, a little time frame in life when all some, not all, some of your friends start smoking those dark clove cigarettes. To me, it's yeah, a little I reminiscent of that. Once. Do I, was that you? You were that guy. <laughs> no, I said I was 17 <laughs> once and I had friends that did that. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> yep. You can watch their little, little air sacs burst every time they inhaled the clove smoke. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that. Yeah. No, I do get a lot of brown spice, but Joe, I don't know. I, it, it is a leather, but it's also a, an elusive dark red fruit in there. Yeah. There's earthiness. There's a lot of yep. earthiness on top of that. Right. That's Sangiovese, you know, a good, uh, as much as I tease, and in the winery, when somebody says, hey, are you making Sangiovese this year? I'll say, no, I'm making wine. Um, but I, <laughs> I love, I really, really love <laughs> the varietals, and I do love Sangiovese a lot. And it is hard to find a good example of, of Sangiovese. And um, I would like to say one thing that we may be heading down the road of actually making a decent Sangiovese if the nose on this flat indication. We may have done something right. So uh, I think apple butter, John. How about apple butter for this? You know, apple butter. I am a big fan of apple butter. Yeah. Yeah. 
especially apple butter and peanut butter sandwiches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I have an apple At your food pairing choice. Sorry. I have a great apple I, butter story yeah, that'll, just, that'll, that'll fit with this wine. And that is when, when I was a doctor at the Navy Hospital in Bethesda, we lived in Bethesda across the street from a, a girl's school and uh, where every year of the graduating class would give it an apple tree. And so, and nobody picked the apples. So there were a dozen apple trees full of apples. So I said to the neighborhood kids, the two of them were ours, you know, at ages uh, seven or six and nine, five and eight, something like that. Let's go over and let's, and I'll get up at the tree and I'll show everybody bring a basket and I'll shake the tree and uh, one of the trees and then we'll pick the apples and we'll bring them back. We'll make apple butter, apple sauce, apple juice, apple cider. So they're um, uh, now up in an apple tree. That's a you know a, a doctor at, at the Naval Hospital, which was about 200 yards away in this private Catholic girls' school, and uh, and I have probably eight eight or nine children underneath the tree, and I start shaking the tree, and just as I do that, two police cars zip into them and stop right below us, and um, and I said, "This is the end of everything. This is it. I've done it. I've ruined everything." And uh, all the children left, left rapidly on foot, and I'm still up at the tree. <laughs> Turns out the, the policemen that were just there to have an off the air talk, and they weren't aware that this apple apple uh, thievery was going on. So anyway, they left. The kids came back, and we made apple butter for the next three days in our neighborhood. <laughs> one we had thousand apples. <laughs> you had to be there. You had to be big up in the tree. Yeah. I'd rather have been able to flee on foot, but um, <laughs> I wasn't going anywhere. I was 10 feet up in an apple tree. Is there a <laughs> like that in uh, Revenge of the Nerds or Animal House? <laughs> <laughs> Later. <laughs> uh, 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 anyway, apple believe. butter in this wine. There, there it is. So. <laughs> I have to, I'm going to say one thing. Um, uh, uh, Dad has always, in my mind, been the uh, the world's greatest uh, real life Tom Sawyer. Uh, just thinking about all the th all the things in my life that I suddenly found myself doing that I didn't expect to find myself doing, like planting grapes or um, or going around and uh, collecting manure with my grandfather and my brother when I was little, and, and some. <laughs> Somehow uh, for dad's garden and somehow being made to think that this was going to be really fun, really cool. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. my, my brother and my father were collecting okay. manure and I'd gotten permission from a guy at a horse barn in San Antonio. And they were, they had the, they were shoveling it into the trailer and the trailer was about half full and a guy with a loaded gun came out of the, who, who worked there and, and, said don't move and they said glad i don't know what happened after that gladly but i'm moving so so he thought they were stealing horse manure and uh and he didn't speak english very well so that was a problem and uh anyway they, they survived and but that's uh, they always they used to bring that up but every every you come by your apple thievery honestly then sir <laughs> i said the pattern it's true um, You'll notice that oh. story, they had permission to go get it. The apples, you know, they, uh, <laughs> they learned a lesson. <laughs> when, I was, when, I was, when I was little, um, we, Dad, we, I remember we used to, um, we, would, we would mulch our, our garden with, uh, with leaves that people had collected in their yard. And so when I was in elementary school, um, all of my friends somehow knew that my father was always looking for uh, um, leaves for his garden and so um they somehow dad had gotten everybody excited about c collecting leaves i remember getting these phone calls from my friends down the street saying we've got several bags of leaves come get it <laughs> so, uh, and we did we did and we did yeah. we did free nutrients yes. for the garden why not right yep. right um, well come uh, by my house yeah. in the fall i got plenty of them <laughs> Same. So, I'm, I'm going to wrangle everybody back to the topic of wine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. Thank you. Uh, 
Solo, solo italiano, primavera. There you go, primavera. Yeah. I mean, we are now, we're going to put on Dr. Becker's business card, uh, manure wrangler and apple bandit. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm guilty on both counts, and, uh, but uh, still out of jail. So, I'm, I'm, you know, that's all I can do. <laughs> And there's a comment here, getting a whole new picture of Dr. Becker. The only image I have of Dr. Becker is stranded up in a tree, staring down at two cops, <laughs> thinking, please don't look up. <laughs> please don't look up. <laughs> oh. So, uh, Rachel, um, the nose on, on this wonderful Sangiovese blend. <laughs> Apple, John, get over it. I mean, really. <laughs> and can, we, can we also hear why you picked this one, Rachel? Because I yes, yes. So, <laughs> thanks for ruining my eye makeup. <laughs> yes. So I get really excited about this one because this is our very first release of any wines that we were able to. Um, in any large proportion make off of our wine club blocks. So here's a little cheers to all of our wine club members and their wine club sponsored vines. And I think that it's quite lovely, despite John's um, animosity to San Giovese, where he always backs up that he actually likes it, but we know he doesn't. <laughs> tell you right now, and it's looking great this year. It is, isn't it? It's such a pretty block. Yep. Mm -hmm. I like it, driving by it every morning. Big, right. beautiful clusters of grapes, you know, and they're purple and just lovely and huge and yeah. growing. That's wonderful. Those yeah. canopies look beautiful. Isn't it? It is indeed. Okay, John, so talk about pairing the Sangio with the Barbera from Drew's. And isn't there a little Petit Verdot in here? Is that correct? Yeah. Am I, yeah. Or is it Cap? There is. I can't remember, uh, hold on. No, it's Petit Verdot. Well, bottle's right behind me. Both. Thanks, Rob. Thank you. Yeah. It's uh there you go. I, it's, oh that's uh, right, because it's the petites are all right off that same block. Fifty-eight percent Sangio, eighteen percent Barbera, twelve percent cab, twelve percent petite Syrah. Where is the cab from, just out of curiosity? Canada. Okay. You sure it's not from America? Canada family, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, I know. Oh, <laughs> I also have to say, just while we're just while we're thinking for a second, uh, I'll just bring up. I, I absolutely love this label. Um, this is one of my favorite Tony Bell of the uh, flower vase, um, and I think it's such a wonderful uh, compliment to this, even to this particular wine, this particular style of wine. I think it's. I think it goes very well. <laughs> and, you know, Joe, that's the, um, that was Tony and Claire's uh, 10th wedding anniversary. Oh, really? And Tony said, instead of giving Claire um, a dozen or two dozen roses, he decided to do a watercolor. <clears throat> and that's it. That's the, that's the 10th anniversary. Watercolor, it, you know, destroyed the fire that destroyed everything that Tony had ever done. But wonderful that we had this um, slide to make the reproduction. Beautiful watercolor. I have the first edition of Wonder Warthog that Tony did. So that's right. Yeah. I'm still yeah. waiting on that wine label. Wonder Warthog. Uh huh. That'd yep. be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you can follow it by the fabulous furry freak brother Chardonnay. <laughs> I'm just saying. That would be a great label for the fascination. <laughs> How fascinating it would be. <laughs> Very fascinating. You'd have to charge like ninety dollars a bottle for it, though. John and Rachel, uh, I like when I taste a wine like this, which is an unusual blend. Uh, what comes to mind? What 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 do you think about other wines that you've tasted from California or from from France or Italy that have have this this taste combination? Anything that come up on the computer when you taste yeah, it? Yeah, actually, uh, one of the blends that pops into my head immediately is the original uh, version of. Um, uh, Jordan, uh, or excuse me, not Jordan, of um, uh, it was Siena by, um, oh heavens to Betsy, they're in uh, Dry Creek, um, oh. casino owner. Um, 
anyway, the blend is Sienna and they use, San, it was a Sangio based blend of uh, uh, Sonoma County Italian fruit. It was just this beautiful Sangio Barbera. They had a little bit of dolcetto in it and just some cab. Um, so it was, you know, kind of probably subconsciously there in the back of my mind anyway, when I started this blend, but um, that Sienna, um, was just absolutely fabulous and their their winery is just beautiful and Jody and I would uh, take a picnic up there every once in a while and grab a bottle and and um, this bottle just this wine just reminds me of sharing this is a wine to share uh, Ferrari Cron yeah. Yeah. John so. and thought about putting some of our wonderful Dolcetto in this or Tempranillo um, you know, uh, I think about that all the time, and then somebody wants to bottle all of the Dolcetto by itself for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk to you. I, yeah, <laughs> this kind of inspired a little thing. I've, I still have a couple of barrels of the first harvest of the Sangio, the, the 2014, that mm -hmm. is tasting really, really nice right now. So maybe doing something extra special with that. You know, Dad. Uh, a little over 10 years ago, we took this wonderful trip to um, Florence and um, we, we, you had set up some very nice tastings to go around and, and taste some of the Chiantis. And I, I feel like, um, you know, some of those very, those darker, richer styled Chiantis, this is sort of moving in that direction. And I, you know, uh -huh. I feel a good four, five, six years, you know, this wine's just going to keep getting better. I think it's going to be. I do uh, too. Yeah, I do. I agree. Rachel, do you, what do you think about that? Um, I, I agree also. And I, you know, tasting this, knowing that there's the Barbera in there, plus, you know, a little bit of Petit Syrah. And I, I wonder how, how much the Barbera is contributing to that, that darkness and that fruitiness. How much of it is the, the Sangio and how much is the Barbera and how their interplay is. But I think it's such a rustic wine, you know? I think this is super food friendly. Good choice. Thank you. That's an excellent. I love the tannin choice. structure of this. Is that, too. is that kind of what the petite Syrah does? Is that is that it builds up this nice backbone, this almost a little chewy edge to it? It does, definitely. Okay. Both Tangio and Barbera are lighter varietals. So yeah. That um, uh, the super, what they used to call super Tuscans, then super Italian and stuff we're taking some of these lighter varietals use a little cab or merlot in there the petite sera offers a bit of tannic structure barbera is very light on tannins to begin with barbera on its own doesn't last but a few years um sanjo's got a little bit more but sanjo's also also needs some blenders and its classic blenders include a much heavier tannin structured wine so by using the petite sera and the, the cabernet we really we really come together with uh, uh a nice tannic wine it, and it is a food friendly wine. It still has a lot of those beautiful fruit notes, those lighter um, cherry esque and almost uh, uh, cranberry edge notes there that really lend itself. Um, much, much lighter wine. Also, a red wine that you could drink by the glass and not feel yeah. like your palate being weighted down. Um, right. And I love good, bold Cabernet, don't get me wrong, but just drinking a straight glass of extraordinarily bold Cabernet without anything else there, it, it can wear, it can give you palate fatigue. This wine is not going to give you palate fatigue. It's going to be an enjoyable wine. I think that's wine. a good point. Yeah. Good point. I agree. But I think this, the Petite Syrah is just always such a wonderful blending grape. You know, I think it's, you could almost call this a, a super Texan, for lack of a better oh, description, but just a little because... Play on words. What's that? A little play on words there, Dr. Pond. <laughs> <laughs> Not our new marketing director. <laughs> uh, one, of our, one of our neighboring wineries copyrighted that thing, by the way. So uh, we probably won't be calling it Super Texan. Super Texan? No. no. It, instead of Super Texan, we'll be calling it the original Texas. That's, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I can feel it coming. <laughs> <laughs> No, Joe, I agree with you so much. I think those tannins are so lovely. They're very present and they're not super, super grippy, but they're, they have to me like a, almost like a cocoa um, finish yeah, to them. <laughs> no, 
I was noticing, noticing like a dark chocolate on the nose, like a cacao on the nose. Um, so that's kind of where that almost that leather esque kind of characteristic. Yeah, that's not. Yeah, that's very nice. Good job. Okay. Ready? They're not Shall we? Shall we move on to the piece de la resistance? We should. Gee, Rachel, you froze. Oh. I feel like there's a lot of freezing going on. Okay. Right now. <laughs> Ready? Okay. So, 2017 Cabernet Sauvignon. This one, not a reserve, but it is a brand new label. Well, at the time when we first started bottling it, which I think was 2014 was our first release of this one. It has the new, very pretty paper label. And I love this label. I think this label is so just very elegant and lovely. Um, I'm gonna look at my notes real quick, moment. So this one also happens to be Cabernet Sauvignon off of our estate vineyard as well as, of course, some cab from the High Plains, Ty Wilmoth, uh, Diamante Doble Dos Vineyard, um, Six Heart, Ready, Ready Vineyards, um, Drew Talents. I mean, this is a nice, nice little showcase of vineyards across Texas, I think. Yeah, it's a good Texas red, red cabin, red wine, but a good Texas cab. Mm -hmm. um, I would just like to address that fact that we can make good Cabernet in Texas. We let, can make me, several good cabs in Texas. We can definitely make damn good Cabernet in Texas. Yeah, and we have. When I yes, say we, we I mean multiple you. times. Yeah. We're just waiting for somebody else to follow suit. What? <laughs> Look at you. Look at you. <laughs> like there's anybody that can catch us. <laughs> pretty fast man I run a lot pretty fast <laughs> yeah so this is definitely uh, feels like it's it's more in the direction I mean it has the state cab but you mentioned the six hearts the jet this seems like it's more in the direction of the the darker notes the darker fruit notes that you get from the Diamante Dobles that you get from Tokyo yep absolutely yeah there are a lot of darker notes and um you know, oddly enough, we get some of those same dark notes in our own cab. Yeah. Um, the, you know, uh, especially the older cab on the years that we we can get it ripe without any interference from Mother Nature. Um, we, we end up with a lot of good stuff. But yeah, definitely up the Diamante Doble Dos and um, the Diamante you know, Jet and Ty's cabs both display a lot of those dark, rich notes. And I love the pyrazines are so mature in this wine. They display more of the, the chocolate, um, uh, the coffee edge, you know, a much more integrated pyrazine um, than just mm -hmm. a straight bell pepper. So what are the, what, are, what is the blend here? This, I, I doubt this is 100% cab or is it? Yeah. It is 80% cab. Okay. Okay looking on my phone while we do this and um not that i'm of an age but i don't like the format the phone puts it on i'm just saying <laughs> and it's not me it's not my wow. eyes <laughs> i said <laughs> so 80 percent cab 10 percent merlot from ready vineyards um six percent petit verdot from drew's vineyard and another four percent of cabernet franc from ready's vineyard as well okay. and you're talking i'm sorry it's wonderful. I, I love it. I think it's beautiful. Ty's Vineyard, we've been getting the cab off of his vineyard for the last several years. And his vineyard, I think, is a little unique to, in comparison to some of the other cabs that we get. That his Cabernet comes in so uber ripe. It yeah. is so very ripe and just, I mean, thick and juicy and so flavorful. So much going on in there. Oh. Is anybody else getting a little bit of a tobacco note on yeah. the note? Yeah. yeah. Specifically, uh, Joe, I think I'm getting a little bit of um, uh, Connecticut shade leaf tobacco, Dominican grown, um, well aged. No, nope, nobody else smoking cigars. Okay, 
Okay. <laughs> little weeks. lung bursting happening. Don't inhale. <laughs> been, a, been a few weeks. Yeah. Follow Bill Clinton. <laughs> Good 90s record there. Hey. <laughs> I have to say, I think. Bobby, um, Bobby you're supposed to say, okay, boomer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I have to say one of my favorite. I know I've shared this before on the on these uh, virtual tastings. One of my favorite memories at the time, I, I, I couldn't. It's one of those at the time I couldn't stand it. But it's I look back on it in fondness. But um, mom and dad and I would would just we would work either before we had the vineyard when we when we were just clearing the land and, and setting up the back cabin and mom, I, you know, mom would be driving the tractor and you know, we'd be pushing together brush and brush and doing brush fires, you know, when it, when there was a slight drizzle or, or even when we started planting or when we started putting the trellis system out and going up every weekend. Um, my, my parents, we would, uh, on the way home, we would, uh, they would stop and, and, and get a cold, we'd work all day. They'd stop and get a cold beer in Luchenbach, uh, and, and listen to somebody playing the guitar. And then, right. um, Mom and dad would, would share a cigar in the car ride home, which at the time I just thought was disgusting. But now I look back on that uh, mm. with incredible fondness. Is uh, but the, this, you know, you think about what things make you, what you think of when you taste and smell different wines. Maybe I'm feeling a little nostalgic because this has some of the estate cab in it that I helped plant many years ago. Oh yeah, absolutely. But I have a question for you, Joe. So you're looking back with the the aesthetic fondness of somebody subjected to secondhand smoke. Uh, and mild correct or <laughs> uh, I think that's great that that what an yeah. image but what a perfect weekend too honestly I, I just yeah. love these stories I, I love sitting here and tasting the wine and listening to these great stories especially imagining Bunny Becker driving the tractor uh, no not an Becker image I would have ever come up with on my own so um, <laughs> Bunny and I, the, the, the day that Joe was talking about uh, burning brush piles, we were in, in different places driving different tractors. And all of a sudden, Joe comes running over and says, um, Mom's having a little trouble managing the fire. So, um, <laughs> so, so I think I zipped, you remember that, Joe? And I, so I zipped over and actually it was having no trouble. And but to get the brush piles to burn all the way down, we had to push them together. And so we cut all the, all the all the cedar and mesquite out of our property and, and piled it up and burned it, and uh, but it was a little bit of a struggle. You remember yeah, that day? I do yeah. remember that, day. and I remember, uh, you know, uh, to my Tom Sawyer comment earlier. I remember I would you know I would bring I was middle school or early high school. I'd bring friends out on the weekend, and uh, and Dad would say, you know, to my to my whoever friend I brought or friends. You know, we're we're gonna go we're gonna go burn some brush, and it's it's really fun. You you've got to come do it. You know, trying you know trying to get you know more help uh, to come do this. But um, those were. And you drive a tractor. Fun. That was the question. Drive, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they all said. I can see yeah. how that might lure. <laughs> Sorry, I can see how that might lure kids if you can start exactly. fire to drive a tractor way more than picking up poop. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, but. <laughs> lost on the fact that no matter how many apples there were the doctor still showed up uh, you know <laughs> get the doctor away that's right <laughs> oh, my goodness <laughs> you know hope you at least took some uh, apple butter apple pie or something to that there you go <laughs> we had apple butter like you can't believe i mean i love that <laughs> hopefully you gave some to those po nice policemen as well so right <laughs> Here, will say, one thing I do remember is that when we first had the property, we had a lot of native Mustang grapes. And I remember one year mom making an incredible batch of um, Mustang grape jelly. That was just absolutely wonderful. I think that's probably the best thing you can do with Mustang grapes. Yeah, probably so. Yeah, jelly is the way to go. Joe, I'll tell you what, we'll take some Merlot and we'll make some jelly. <laughs> oh, I, I believe it. I think that's uh, it. I've that done one. it. Right. Okay, um, I have to ask because it's that time of the evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and even though Margaret doesn't want to be on camera, <laughs> um, yeah, you can easy. run, but you can't hide, Margaret. Yeah, you can run, but you can't hide. <laughs> She's pretty good at hiding. She's done a good job. <laughs> uh, so 
food pairings. Uh, pick a wine and pick a food. And Rachel, I, uh, I, you pick these wines, and I hope to God you pair your sweet potato jalapeno mash with one of them. But anyway, that's beside the point. Mm. <laughs> Would you like? Oh to my pick gosh. It yeah. No, now I want the sweet potato mash, the jalapeno soup, whatever. Jalapeno sweet potato mash Poland, stuff thing. Poland, I Poland, yeah, it's delicious. Yeah. yeah, so good. I'm not sure that it would necessarily go so well with any of these, but I would take I some. Would. You think so? It's so good. It would go with everything, right? Um, right. I would say scallops with a Chardonnay. Any yes. Italian rustic food with a Primavera, hands down. But what region of Italy would you be? Tuscan or Sicilian? Would we go further north? Um, you know, what did we say? We're super Tuscan Texany. So the original Texany. Yeah, Diversion. definitely going with that region. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, okay, Bobby, Mr. Chuckles, <laughs> pick a wine and a food. Right. Yeah. Um, so uh, I think with the Primavera. A nice thin crust margarita pizza. There you go. Oh damn, that sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Joe, what would what would you pick? I was just thinking about another um I John, I have to I say this a lot. I love your idea of thinking about um tasting something and having a memory. So I'm thinking about the primavera and um um Several years ago, my mom and dad and I and my sister, it's the first time I'd ever been to the restaurant Cured in San Antonio down at the Pearl. Nice. And uh, he, he uh, dad and my sister ordered this just wonderful uh, assortment of different types of cured pork and, um, and, and some pork belly. And I'm just thinking that the Primavera, I'm, I'm even tasting that when I taste the Primavera. I, I think that would go really well. Oh, yeah. Cured pork. Oh, hell yeah. Absolutely. Okay, Doc, you're up to bat, sir. You know, in, in the southern half of the uh, Burgundy, below Baum, where the, where the shards grow, there's a famous uh, chef uh, who famous for roasting chicken. Uh, he has one or two or three Michelin stars. Uh, we ate the restaurant once. Uh, and uh, his chicken and stuffing and dressing and Things with 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 the Chardonnay with the with the Montrachet was yeah. just wonderful. That, that's my pick. Why right food? Well, I have um, something here that I think will go with the Chardonnay, and mm. it is lovely apple fennel salad with oh wine, yummy wine, red onion, shredded carrot and celery, and it has a Dijon uh, vinaigrette with uh, made with Dijon tarragon. A little bit of dill and a little bit of rice wine vinegar, and it does go well wow. with the shark. Um, I was yes. snacking on it before we went live, so <laughs> yeah. good so, choice. Yes, yes, it went really well with the barbecue we had last night. I'm just saying, <laughs> <laughs> it's, I, it's not, not the first bottle of the Chardonnay I opened in the last 24 hours. I'm just, I'm guilty. So there's no guilt in that. Well there is no yeah. guilt. Yeah. It's very little judgment. <laughs> very little judgment. Okay, Bobby. So what's online for next week, sir? Uh, next I week. Yeah. Yes. Uh, my picks. They, oh, uh, cool. My, my choices. So, uh, which are, I mean, I took me a while to kind of think about, but uh, the 19 White Wing is tasting lovely. Uh, our estate vineyard Sauvignon Blanc. Um, then our 2016 Destate. Oh, fun. Beautiful nice. Zinfandel Dolcetto blend. And then our 2016 Octuno. Oh, sweet. Uh, so uh, that's Ooh. what we'll have for the Good lineup. pick. Boy. Yeah. yeah. Really. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, your uh, sister, Doc, is watching, as she commented earlier, uh, thinking about the 2004 Chardonnay. So, Carolyn, uh, you're online for picking some wines, and I'm going to contact you soon about that. So. <laughs> and to Carolyn, I'm sorry, but I had to share your phone number. We we uh, we want your picks. By the way, can oh, we somebody, just... go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. I was just saying, somebody just said they had pork schnitzel with both the Chardonnay and the Primavera. Ooh, that'd be good. Should we yeah. share the? We got some kind of exciting news today that uh, 
our winery was named as one of the top 25 wineries to visit in the country by Reader's Digest. So uh, we were uh, only one of two in Texas. So kind of kind of exciting news. That was super cool. I love that article because we're up yeah. there with some pretty cool wineries. Thought so too. Did you work on the condensed version of that, Joe? No, oh, thanks. <laughs> okay. All right. Any, any further any further comments or any any news? Of course, we do have hands on harvest coming up this next week. Kind of excited to see people at the vineyard helping us out a little bit. Speaking of Tom Sawyer, um, <laughs> so. I know, but just our our hearts and our minds out to all the people fighting this fourth wave of this bar, damn virus. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's do all we can to make it work. Agreed. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, everybody. Thank you again for allowing us in your, your living rooms and your lives for an hour. Thank you for joining us. And Thank you, John, Rachel. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.